Hey guys, uh, this is Akshay Today we'll be looking at how to install uh, Sitecore Universal Tracker version 1 on Sitecore 9.1. First, let's uh, take a look at um, what the Universal Tracker is. So Universal Tracker is meant um, for you to um, collect interactions from anything. So it's not specific to websites. Um, you could do it on mobile apps, IoT uh, hubs, anything you can think of. You should be able to track those interactions using Universal Tracker. Now, how is Universal Tracker different from XConnect? Um, it's different from XConnect because XConnect uh, collects completed transactions, whereas Universal Tracker uh, collects the interactions as they happen, um, hold them temporarily, processes them, and then pushes them to uh, XConnect once it's done. So these um, are a few slides from the symposium um, and the MVP summit, uh, which we are allowed to share. As you can see, the way they depict it, you pretty much can think of any app you can um, off, a, you know, other than a website like a mobile app or a VR app or any IoT based um, applications you have, you can utilize universal tracking and then ultimately it'll process and store it in XConnect and you can retrieve it uh, at another point. I, I'm yet to look at how the reporting comes up, but that's something to look at. So, main pieces are the tracking service. And uh, Universal, Universal Tracker is built as a microservice um, using .NET Core as a new concept called as the hosting service, which gives the framework and the base um, guidelines for all these apps to run. And Universal Tracker is one of them which runs on top of the hosting service. Um, and then the processing part, uh, it processes all of those interactions and then uh, clumps them together puts them in XConnect at that point. So this is a good graphic for you to look at. Um, the interaction comes in, collect, it collects it, it temporarily stores it in SQL, processes it. There's a bunch of filters, um, and like you could define custom filters and custom processing if you choose to, uh, at least that's the concept anyways. And once that's done, you can take that and then Universal Tracker would put it into uh, an XConnect collection. So now that we kind of know what Universal Tracker is, let's start installing it according to what the installation doc says and let's see if I am able to install it. So we are back to our VM, um, which I had used to install Sitecore 9.1 in an earlier blog post. Um, you can get the Universal Tracker version one from the dev.sitecore.net. There is some documentation, not too much um, really, but I think they're currently working on um, providing more uh, information. Universal Tracker by itself, the SDK, there's no like C Sharp or JS code available, but they do, they are working on, uh, on like Xamarin code base for you to build mobile apps and, and bake it into it, but that's something we can look at another time. Uh, you can, however, look at the uh, 2.1 installation guide. Again, we are going to follow this to see if I can install it and test it. Uh, talks a little bit about the Universal Tracker. Uh, says there's four parts, collection processing, the schemas for the database, and the status. Um, and we will try to uh, install these as they come, uh, as the instructions tell us to. So far, when I looked at the prerequisites, it seemed like um, they are all covered uh, with the things we did for 9.1, but again, double check in your instance uh, if you qualify for all of the uh, prerequisites and make sure you run all the execution policies. Okay, so we... Um, we downloaded all of these. Um, we will take a look at that shortly. We ran the execution policy. Um, and then let's go here. Let's see what it says. These should all be taken care of by the 9-1 prerequisites. All right, so let's take a look. It wants to do the SQL collection processing. 
for our case, since we're not scaling it, it's not a production system or anything of that sort. Uh, what we'll be doing is we'll install all of them on one server um, and then uh, later on I would love to test it to see how we can break it and see um, uh, the load it can take. Uh, let's go take a look. All right, now we have to look at how to install the SQL to it database. Okay, so they want us to unzip um, the DAC pack and the deploy for the tracking. Um, they want us to get into, uh, once you unzip them, uh, they want us to go into the folder uh, where it's on-prem and then we need to run uh, the on-prem deploy specifying the with the um, DAC pack file is the SQL server credentials and run that so that's what we will be doing shortly All right. as you can see we ran our script and it looks like it was successfully completed let's go take a look uh, in SQL server and see if that went through yep as you can see you can uh, see that my UT database was created with a few tables uh, and some stored procs. So now let's go on to the next step. So the next step is to install the collection service. Um, let us make sure that it wants us to copy the tracker uh, collection service packages, which we have, uh, unzip the deploy, uh, and then go into the on-prem infrastructure. And then it wants us to run this uh, command. Let's go take a look. And if you notice, some of these um, uh, paths and the package file names are a little bit different um, than the release, so just keep an eye out uh, for that. Uh, essentially, what we did do is we unzip the collection service deploy. We don't need to do the WDP as specified the paths as they require us to do so. Uh, so so the database can only run the on-premise deploy file. Okay, let's go. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and run it. All right, let's see if it doesn't exist. That's fine. Can find. Oh, you know what? Then I could have probably changed the. Yeah, so it looks like it's built 45 as opposed to the um, 35 build. Let's take a look. So once we pick the path, it's asking, it's dying again and asking us for uh, with the name. Okay. Okay. Let's try this. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. Um, so I think the instructions uh, do need to get modified a little bit because it doesn't really specify it. But um, since we didn't specify the SQL Server uh, information as part of the running script, now we must go to the config XML and modify it. So according to the documentation, since we didn't specify the value, I've come to my uh, collection service site core tracking SQL config, open the config.xml, I'm gonna specify the connection string right here and save that, uh, add the binding for your service in your host, which we will do. Uh, okay, awesome, let's do that next. Okay, it's crucial that the connection string is in this format and you specify the retry count, the interval, and the connection timeout. Uh, again, I don't think the notes clearly specify uh, on the installation document, but this is something you need to do. So according to the document, I've added the, the host into the, the host file. Uh, let's see what we need to do next. I think the self-signed cert I will um, generate and install it at another time uh, but for now it has both the bindings I really don't I think as part of the install they could have easily added the host name but uh, we'll see what to do next 
Next, it looks like um, we need to install the processing service. Uh, looks like it has quite a few uh, parameters. Let's take a look. Okay, we have those two unpack deploy, which we did. Um, and then the deploy specify the WDP. So let's uh, let's go ahead and run this and see where that takes us. Okay, so we have all of our paths set up. Actually, I don't. Hold on. Right now I am because I need it to be in the deploy folder uh, on prem of the tracking processing. Let's take a look what this does. Ooh, looks like that uh, finished. Let's go back here, take a look. If we go to our inet pub, dot, 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 we have the tracking processing. We need to do the same over here, uh, which is we need to set the config, which I will right now, and that should take care of it. Just keep in mind, you have to specify these values as well in order for it to um, uh, work properly. Next, um, we need to go modify the X connect. Let's take a look at that. It wants us to modify the service URL, which we will modify that, and then the client certificate node. So let's take a look at both of those and update those. Okay, we specified the um, service URL. Uh, we need to get the client certificate. So if you open your 91 sites um, connection string, you should be able to grab it from here. Let me copy that guy there. And dump it in there. That should take care of that. Okay, added this as well to the host. So that should take care of that. Uh, wants us to go there. Let us see what happens. I don't know. I have to actually set up the uh, set up the um, HTTPS. So let me do that. Okay. So I generated the um, the self signed certificate. Also imported them into Trusted Root. Um, authorities. Uh, one thing to mention is that you have to add the IIS uh, users uh, to the permission uh, for the X Connect. And once you do all of that, you should see all greens, as you can see, for the tracking collection as well as for the processing. And this should complete your um, universal tracker install. For the most part, I would say the, the instructions are pretty decent. There are some, if you're copying it word for word, uh, just be careful that you modify the path and the names of the, the zip files or the uh, WDP files. Um, I think that should pretty much be it. I will uh, post some notes along with this video uh, on our blog, but as usual, please do contribute to our Stack Exchange. It's in public beta. Uh, we need your help answering, uh, asking questions, commenting, upvoting, downvoting. Please help us out. Um, it means a lot. And then uh, Sitecore Slack as well. Um, growing community of over 4,000 people. Come join the conversation. Have fun. Um, thanks again. This is Akshay Hope you find this useful.